Today is Monday, June 13th, uh, February. February 13th, 2016. I call to order this meeting of the Goose Creek CISD Board of Trustees. Ms. Woods, was this meeting properly posted? Yes. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Thank you. Before proceeding tonight, I'd like to remind everybody that uh, this meeting is being recorded visually and uh, orally by electronic devices. Um, and if you currently have a, an electronic device at this time, please either turn it off or silence it. Okay. We will now have opening exercises. Dr. Duarte. President Richard, school board members, Mr. O'Brien, the opening exercises for the February 13th, 2017 board meeting will be presented by students from Alamo Elementary School. We will begin the opening ceremonies with the prayer led by Gigi Cockrell. Everyone please rise. Father God, thank you for our safe travels here tonight. We ask your blessing on this evening and seek your guidance and wisdom as we deliberate the business of our district. We ask you to watch over the students and parents with us tonight and keep all of our students and employees safe. Finally, thank you for the opportunity to serve them. We all ask this in your name. Amen. 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 The pledges will be led by Hannah Livingston and Caleb Franco. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the, the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the te Texas, one state under God. One and indivisible. The following students will perform Sheree Lehu and Three Little Birds. And they will be accompanied by ukuleles played by Alicia Boudet and James Boudier. The students are Eric Buring, Rowan Boudier, Caleb Franco, Jacqueline Franco, Franco um, Alicia Garcia, Caleb Holt, Alasia Jones, Hannah Livingston, Jaliciana Marino, Lillian Mendoza, Joaquin Morales, Gabriela Russell, Leo Russell, Adrian Slaughter, Kingston Thompson, and Ozzy Toledo. Those students are under the direction of Alicia Boudier and Principal Steve Livingston. Thank you. 
Thank you, boys and girls. Parents of these students, would you stand, please, so we could recognize you? Thank you so much for bringing your children out tonight. <laughs> That song, Two Little Birdies, is one of my favorite songs. I love the reggae beat to it and everything. It's wonderful. Soloist, great job. Great job. That's a future All-State choir student. Right? Yeah. yeah. Great job, Alamo. Very, very talented. Thank you, Mr. Livingston and your staff. Attendance is an important factor for our district, not only for funding from the state, but for the benefit of students to receive instruction. Each six weeks, an attendance report is generated to identify the attendance percentage for every campus. A campus from each level, elementary, junior, and high school, is recognized as having the top attendance for the district. Our top two elementary campuses for the, fir for the third six weeks our first, Victoria Walker Elementary, with 96.65%, and representing Victoria Walker, are Axel Aguilar, Marissa Gonzalez, Nikita Gupta, Dulacia Macchion, Austin Reno, Melanie Rosas, and Principal Monica Juarez. If you guys will come up, please. Our second elementary campus, who was only two one-hundredths of a point behind Victoria Walker, is Antonio Banuelos Elementary School with 96.6%. top junior school for this six weeks is George H. Gentry Junior School with 96.41% and representing Gentry or are Riley Buchanan, William Caldwell, Lakeen Horn, Anika Martinez, Ava Ray Palton, Danny Fan, and Principal Kathy Holland. We have two high schools that we are representing because they had a tie up to the hundredths. So our first high school we're going to recognize 
is Goose Creek Memorial High School, and they're being represented by Trace Jacobs, Elizabeth Ridley, and Principal Susan Jackson. Both of our high schools had an attendance rate of 93.26. So our second high school is Robert E. Lee High School, and they are represented by their principal, Joe Farnsworth. some alternative campuses that we have set goals for and we have a couple campuses that met that goal for the third six weeks so I'd like to first recognize Impact Early College High School with a an attendance percentage of 96.58 and they are being represented by Richard Aramio, Alexis Lee, Ashnel Polimus, Paige Sopi, and Principal Laura Reyes. The next campus we would like to recognize is Peter E. Highland Center. They had 84.01% attendance, and they are being represented by Chelsea Fontenot, Adolfo Hernandez, and Principal Michelle Verdun. And our last campus for the night is Point, and representing Point is with 79.87%, Cheryl McGilbray, Page, Sieva Curtis, and Principal Trisha Times. And we have Miss McCoy with us. The Goose Creek CISD FFA organizations will celebrate National Future Farmers of America Week, February 18th through the 25th. This year's theme is Transform Purpose to Action, and it embraces more than 85 years of FFA traditions while looking forward to transforming the message of agriculture. To celebrate FFA Week, Teacher Patricia Hollis, the FFA sponsor at Lee High School, has worked with the city of Baytown for a proclamation for FFA week. Students representing FFA include Isabella Garzaria, Brittany Ship, Ashley Ibanez, Kayla Chandler, and Gabriela Villafranco. We also have teachers with us tonight, Patricia Hollis, Solomon Butler from Robert E. Lee, Haley Haberman from GCM, and Kenny Rogers from Ross S. Sterling. 
I'm going to have our mayor, mayor pro tem from the city of Baytown, David McCartney, read our proclamation, and then I'd like the teachers, students, and our CT director to come up. Thank you. I was reading a little bit about future farmers of America today, and I discovered that uh, in 1925 we had a problem that uh, people were leave youngsters were leaving the farms and they weren't uh, going into farming anymore. So they started uh, Future Farmers of Virginia to try to uh, correct that situation, and it was so successful that in 1928 they started Future F Future Farmers of America. And they met in uh, St. Louis, Missouri in 1928, had 33 members and uh, 18 states participating. So this has been going on for 89 years. It's been a very successful program, and I'd like to read this proclamation. Future Farmers of America Week. Whereas future farmers of America and agriculture education provide a strong foundation for the youth of Baytown and for the future of food, fiber and natural resource systems in America and whereas FFA promotes premier leadership, personal growth and career success among its members and whereas agriculture education and FFA ensure a steady supply of young professionals to meet the growing demands in the science, business and technology of agriculture and whereas the FFA motto, learning to do doing to learn, earning to live, living to serve, gives direction of purpose to these students who take an active role in succeeding in agricultural education, and whereas FFA promotes citizenship, volunteerism, patriotism, and cooperation. Now, therefore, on behalf of the mayor, Stephen Don Carlos, as mayor of the city of Baytown, do hereby proclaim February 18 through the 25th 2017 as Future Farmers of America Week in Baytown and encourage all of our citizens to recognize and support the efforts of the FFA educators and participants who are working together to secure a bright future for the youth of our community. Each year, Region 4 recognizes two campus principals from each district within the region, one elementary and one secondary principal. Principals are selected for this award by their peers in the district and recognized at the Region 4 Principal Recognition Ceremony. This year's recipients of this prestigious award first are Betty Baca, principal of Harlem Elementary School, who is our elementary principal of the year. Betty has been in education for 20 years, all in Goose Creek. This is her third year as a principal. She's been an assistant principal and a family involvement coordinator. A fellow principal who nominated Be Betty wrote, her concern for growth of her students is prevalent. She is a team player to all principals. She works with her staff to improve scores for her students. Overall, she is a delight to be around. 
I'm going to have Betty come up and be recognized. And in addition, we have Macy Schubert and Yvonne Silva from Community Resource Credit Union who are supporters of the school district to provide a token of appreciation for our elementary principal of the year. thrilled to be here. We love being able to give back and support these principals and the district and any campus and uh, just know that if there's anything that Community Resource Credit Union can do for your campus, um, we are here for you um, and we're just thankful for this opportunity. Congratulations. Very well deserved. principal of Baytown Junior School is our secondary principal of the year. Matt has been in education for 19 years. Eight of his 19 have been here in Goose Creek. He has been a principal for two years and an academic dean in the district for five. A fellow principal wrote about Matt. Matt is a true leader among his peers who unselfishly shares his knowledge. Congratulations, Matt. Next, I'm going to have Kevin Foxworth, Executive Director of Special Projects and Strategic Planning, who will be recognizing the United Way Awards. Okay, President Richard, Board of Trustees, Superintendent O'Brien, Goose Creek CSD, has held a long-standing relationship with the United Way of Greater Baytown Area and Chambers County in its support of our students and their families. I am pleased to announce the GCC ISD United Way campaign increased in its giving and raised a total of $47,450. At this time, we would like to recognize outstanding campuses for their exemplary performance and dedication to this campaign. I would like to introduce Ms. Suzanne Zutter, the Executive Director of the United Way Greater Baytown Area and Chambers County, who will announce the United Way Awards. Thank you for that introduction. 
Um, it's a thrill to be here. Um, schools are close and dear to my heart and to the United Way. As you all probably know, education is one of our main goals, um, and we're here as your community in spirit and in heart. Um, I want to thank uh, two schools that um, their participation rate of giving of all was between 85 and 95 percent, and those schools are the Impact Early College High School and Clark Elementary. We're having our we're having our um, awards banquet in April, and then the schools are going to get great big trophies to show off. So, I would also like to honor those who received their bronze award, and the bronze award is 50% um, to 74% participation of all employees. The bronze awards are Hopper Primary, San Jacinto, Benuelos. Lamar Elementary, Travis Elementary, and Cedar Bayou Junior. Okay, Goose Creek CISD would also like to recognize outstanding employee participation for our top three campuses. Coming in with the district's top employee participation percentage at 94% is Impact Early College High School with Principal Laura Reyes. Come on up, y'all. Give her a hand. <laughs> Second highest campus with top employee percentage is Clark Elementary at 89% with Principal Susan Griffin. Uh, 
our third highest employee participation percentage goes to hopper primary with seventy one percent with miss loretta salazar The next, the next set of recognitions are the highest contributions of a small, medium, and large facility site. The small facility site is Impact Early College High School, which contributed $3,100. Principal Laura Reyes. <laughs> All right, just stand up here a while. Okay. Our medium facility site is Benuelos Elementary, and, con and they contributed $4,131. <laughs> campus for Renee Meyer and our large facility site goes to Lee High School which contributed three thousand and eighty five dollars principal Dr. Joe Farnsworth I'm gonna do one more. we also have we also have one special recognition award this is uh, this goes to it's with a 24% increase in employee participation from 13% to 39%, and from donations of $211 to $2,107, and it goes to Victoria Walker Elementary, and the Walker principal is Monica Juarez. Thank, to, thank you to all of our campus representatives who are here today. Principals, I'm especially pleased that you brought your campaign chair people with you because I know who does all the work as a former principal who I always assigned it to an assistant principal. So I know the principals support it, but it's the people in the trenches that are really out there selling it. So I do appreciate it. Appreciate all you for being here tonight. Um, I'd like to, Ms. Garcia, know that, note it. Make note that Mr. Lewis will speak. We have no one signed up to speak. We will move on to item number five, approval of minutes. First, we have the January 18th board workshop. I move to approve the minutes of the board workshop on January 18th. I'll second the motion. We have a motion from Ms. Coffey, a second from Ms. Woods to approve the minutes as presented of the January 18th um, board workshop. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. None opposed. We have six affirmative and one absent at this time. Our next set of minutes that we need to discuss and approve will be the regular board meeting of January 23rd. I move to approve the minutes from the January 23rd regular board meeting. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Coffey, a second from Mr. Sampson to approve the January 23rd regular board meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. That motion also passes six in the affirmative, one absent. <clears throat> okay. We now move on to discussion items. Mr. O'Brien, superintendent's report. For our superintendent's report this evening, we have a presentation on the 2018-19 school start times uh, proposal. Assistant Director Abel Narvez, Rick Walterscheid, Director of Transportation, and uh, Lisa Duarte, our Assistant Superintendent of CNI. Early start times is, is driven somewhat by transportation, our ability to facilitate different times in the day for different campuses. 
However, it is a curriculum matter. Um, it's why Dr. Corte will be here to help us get through this. But uh, I believe Mr. Walterside, you're going to start us off with the presentation. Yes, sir. Um, last board meeting, we were asked to uh, go back and take a look at some different times, and so we'll. Uh, we'll, 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 you've seen most of these slides already, but so uh, we want to fast forward and bring you the new data uh, based upon the uh, board discussion last time we met. We um, didn't have our other options, or the options that we presented once before, one through five. Uh, and at the last meeting, we were asked to take back and figure uh, with the elementary A and B, which would be option six, starting at 745, uh, through junior high at 815, and high school at 645. Uh, looking at these numbers, we were, uh, I think, pleasantly surprised uh, at how easily they did go together. Again, it does look like in number six, we ran an additional route. Mainly that's because, again, uh, our time is shortened as uh, putting A and B together, trying to double up those buses to get to the junior high and high school, so that would add an additional 43 routes, up and above what we currently have. But whenever we get to number seven, just going back to a four-tier system, elementary A, B, junior high, and then high school, you can see here that only adds an additional 20 routes. Um, that was pretty, uh, made us happy <laughs> would be the easiest way to put it. Um, it reduced our cost and, and, it, and it does look like um, uh, we were excited to see that. This slide puts all of those different scenarios on one page, option one through option seven. Uh, we also additionally took time to uh, investigate um, our special education routes that, that we have that run pretty much most of the day, throughout the day and are really geared toward the, the students' needs uh, as far as the R committees and, and uh, the different programs that, they, those, that that student population goes to. Um, what we found on every one of these scenarios, it ranges anywhere between 11 to 15 additional routes just on the special ed side. So if we were looking at uh, total routes um, added, back in this scenario if we went back to scenario number seven <coughs> on this particular route that would be 35 routes uh, on that one option number six an additional uh, 11 routes on that one and so on and so forth um, again this is all preliminary what we would hope to do is, is have ample time to really drill down and give a good number on what our uh, what our good, what our numbers would do, because we would we would go back and really redesign our entire routing system. The way that we did this was we did not go back and reroute every bus. Uh, we kept stops in place uh, as best that we could, and we just changed the sequencing from A to B to C to D, if you will, at each level, and that's how we got these numbers. I think given time. I would expect that we could get those numbers down. And that's encouraging to say the least. So. so I don't know if you want to go back to the seven. Yes, I will. Together. So we've kept um, every option that we've talked about for you, and that gives us um, the original and then six additional. Our hopes would be that maybe we can narrow this scope down and talk about two, maybe three options rather than seven. I like six and seven, mainly seven. I like seven. I, I have a question, and I, I know, I feel confident I know the answer. Of if we're going to change anything, seven appears to be the best option. However, I don't like the elementary start time proposal of 715. If anything, I would push everything 15 minutes forward. I would rather not have an elementary student waiting on the bus stop to get on a bus to be at school so at 7.15. So if you went back to 7, 
i would say push everything fifteen minutes before i would even consider changing the schedule in other words what it does is that fifteen minutes at the end to would be a seven thirty to four thirty school day we'd be proposing or looking at okay what does six combines the two six combines elementary a and elementary b um so it's a three tier it's so it would be a true three three tier like that better because it starts at seven well the start time is better but i don't like it uh i don't like the idea of adding 43 additional routes to to achieve the purpose of what we're looking to do here but Rick, give us an answer approximately the cost value of one route added approximately between 30 and 35 thousand dollars recurring cost a year per route and then per bus about 105 thousand per bus so um and we would want to look at our current bus fleet to see exactly how many we felt comfortable with and uh, to give you an example uh, this past week we had one day where we had 36 field trips in one day and i i would ask so, additionally if you're adding 43 routes is that over the course of all four of them or is that you need 43 more drivers to make this happen that is the concerning thing for i think for abel and i is is, is finding those unique it would be 43 drivers right plus the 15 additional special ed you were just talking about yes sir what would be wrong with with adding the 15 minutes at 7 30 it's daylight all year now bro so go back to seven go back to seven <laughs> at seven <laughs> if you move it up 15 minutes if you move it up 15 minutes it essentially is the same i mean it's the same as what you see here uh we would it would it would we have some special programs and in, in, to, to put it simply we have uh programs such as our early college high programs that they're going to be at a fixed time with with the college um, uh, it, impact of course like I said and then what's the other one uh, Peter E. Highlands and then Stewart Career, Stewart Career Center so those would be the ones that would kind of be outside of this potentially outside of these uh, times as far as the high schools go why would Peter Highland and Stewart Stewart Career Center be different we align their schedule with um, Lee College because oh, we have Peter so many Highland. students. And we've aligned Peter E. Highland because they'll share the same bus okay. as Impact because it covers the entire district. And that's correct. It covers the entire district. So we want to maximize the use on those buses for those programs so that we don't have to run two buses potentially to the same. So we have maybe a five-minute differential to drop children off and then get to the next location. And we'd make that recommendation again. Yeah. run through that one more time for me what what you're saying is <clears throat> the exception of early college high peter e highlands and stewart career center those three unique i guess if you will high school centers would be outside of this high school time okay. zone if you will. but currently time, the, i'm sorry i'm sorry for their time zones, their currently time, the right? time zones as i understand it for student career center is the same it's stewart career tech high school is what he meant to say correct oh okay not, not i thought you meant center. the career yeah. center buses no. running between campuses no no, 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 no. Tech no high that, school. that shuttle would okay change. okay you're talking because we're adding another high school to the bus correct. schedule next year correct and we would want to utilize existing routes that cover the entire district that we have and if need be if we grow we would add additional routes to that to become efficient if we need to Any other questions? So I, just just to I, I heard she narrowing it down to two. She six wants them to she wants them direct <laughs> going forward. <laughs> so we're narrowing down to schedules. six and seven with an, an edit to the start times. Seven uh, of number seven. Yeah. So is option six the other option? All, all of them again. Really think right, let's go back to the slide with all, all, all of them again. And let's go back to the option that shows all options okay. on one. Next, next. There we go. There we go. So that way we can look at all seven options at one time and decide what we'd like to maybe say we wouldn't even consider this any further. Don't even worry about it. Things like that. We're not so making decisions. Right. You know. And who's starting when? So and ahead. really, the the whole purpose. <laughs> the other one. ones don't show the. What seven shows is exactly what we were asking for before. The other ones are variations 
with <coughs> with what we have now and just adding more bus routes I think the the number seven is probably the best option at for doing what we what we set out to do Three is high school back at seven seven forty five so it's still later but it's Mm -hmm. I, I believe we had a, a board member who's not with us may have mentioned at one time that or a board member may have mentioned that they didn't think that the junior school should go to the 715 schedule because they have the same research shows they're in the same age category that benefits the most from a late that late lessons. start mm -hmm. if I remember correctly someone just said you're just reversing your problem from high school to junior high in terms of taking advantage of research okay. So if you go, just real quick, let's go to option number two. Uh, so option two was junior school, elementary, elementary, high school with an additional 15 routes. Is that one that we want to eliminate? Yes. Okay, so option two we're done with. Let's go to three. Option three, we've got junior school, then high school, elementary A, elementary B, with an additional 26 routes. Is that one we want to eliminate? Yes. Okay. Option four is elementary and high school together at 745, then elementary B and junior school at 835 with an additional 81 routes. This one was way outside the box. <laughs> Do we want to eliminate this one? Yes. Okay. Option five, elementary A and B at 745, then high school, then junior school with an additional 45 routes. Do we want eliminate this one? No. Yes. Yeah, no? Routes and seven, and it's... This is comparable to six. It's just high school and junior school are flipped on six. So right. if we were going to eliminate one, I would say eliminate number five. Yes. Okay, so go to six, so they can see six, which is elementary A, B, then junior school, then high school. And so, what, go back to five for just a second. How many, or just tell me how many additional routes? 45, so they're almost the same as far as yeah. the number. Correct. Right. Yeah. Almost the same. You know, one, one thought on this one, on five, is if the high school students are concerned about after school activities, after school jobs, up. we've got high school and junior school starting late, and if it's only a difference in two extra routes, this one would maybe help the high school students yeah, a little bit. I agree with that because I, if you push the, the high schools to 415, you're creating, I think, issues on the back side of it. Whereas if you're going to do any changes, I'd be more comfortable than five than the one that just flips junior high and high school. So we want to... I, I would just be more comfortable with it. Keep we've five. Got, we've still got elementary A and B starting at, at 745. So, I mean, that's a later start time as well for... For them, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, they currently start at 7:40. Elementary eight currently starts at 7:45. Correct. Yeah. Uh, well, it's later than what we were looking at. 7:15. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Yes, ma Correct. So option five, yes, keep, and option prefer, six. I would prefer five over six to stay on the board right now. Let me. So the hope is, when you, if you narrow it down to two or three, administration's objective will then be to apply the financial perspective to it. If they, instead of doing seven of them, just give us two or three, and they'll be able to project costs to each of these scenarios, and then we'll be able to be uh, better able to make a decision. Yeah. Option five on our on our special population jumps up to 19 additional versus six at 11 additional. So that's a, one of the things that we'll be bringing back to you at a later date. I like option six on the board. I, I would like to see numbers on that one compared to five and seven. So then we'll keep five, six, and seven. Yeah. And get rid of two, three, and four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Is one what we currently have? One is what we currently have, so it's just our comparison. All right. That gives us some direction. I can live with that for now. Go to one when Brett says I just yeah. want to see what is currently What we're comparing it to is a program that Mr. Walterscheid and his team have taken seven years to perfect, and it is the most efficient uh, system in place, but it's because of what, what parameters we've had to work with. So um, it's going to be hard to measure up to that exact standard, but everything will be a cost above and beyond this because he's sort of conditioned this over the years. But we are 
focused on what's best for our students. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Okay. Well, any other questions? Any more input before we <coughs> dismiss our panel? Thank you all. Right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. <coughs> That's you, not me, is it? <laughs> no, I didn't mean uh -oh, I just want to get it down. Don't turn off. Don't turn off. Check for $240,000 today. What? Oh, yeah. oh, did you want to show them the I'll elementary zones? Oh, yes. Turn that off. You had a, you had oh. a question. I'm sorry. Turn it off. No, <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. You wanted, to, you wanted to see our elementary zones as far as they went from A to from A campuses into to B campuses. And I think we missed that one. We didn't get that far. Uh, red represents the A, and then... Uh, Yellow represents the B. So you can see that our, our more densely populated areas, with the exception of Wallaceville, is our elementary A campus. Uh, what I would like to do is take these numbers and also go back and look at different scenarios. And so this will take some time, but I think it, it would be good for us, be a good exercise for us to do and very enlightened if we went and um, if option five or seven are chosen, you right. need to do that. If option right. six is chosen, you won't it's need to do that. Yes. Correct. And, and to see what, what it would look like if, if we took Crockett and made it a, a B or an A, or made it an A versus uh, Alamo as an A. So we play with those figures and see what we can come up with as far as does that help our overall efficiency. And that would only be if we continue to have two tiers of elementary run. Correct. Correct. If they were if they were combined, then it would. Be if we go with an option that has A and B both starting at the same time, you've got the whole district moving yes. at the right. same time. Right. Okay. Thanks, team. Thank you. Okay. We now move on to um, item seven: action items, the consideration of our consent agenda. Mr. O'Brien. All right. Before we get started, I'd like to pull number four for administrative purposes. And I'd also like to, um, I guess I should say, strike number four and pull number six yes. for discussion That's correct. Um, before going forward. But otherwise, I'd like to present consent agenda items. Number one, 2017-18 budget calendar and process. Number two, innovative courses. Number three, 2017-18 instructional calendar. Number five, consent for superintendent to contact the Commissioner of Education in order to begin development of an innovation plan. Number six, be pulled for modification. Number seven, third option to extend competitive seal proposal, CSP for fencing materials, installation, and related items. Number eight, select competitive seal proposals as the delivery method for the AgriScience Center expansion and renovation. Number nine, final design phase as submitted by Stantac Architecture, Inc. for the construction of the AgriScience Center expansion and renovation. Number 10, select competitive seal proposals, CSPs as the delivery method for the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing renovations package number four, MEP number four. Number 11, propose AIA document A133-209, guaranteed maximum price GMP amendment as submitted by Bartlett Cox. General Contractors LLC for additions and renovations at Stewart Career Center and Kilgore Building Repurpose. Package number two, an associated project cost. Number 12, election order calling for a Board of Trustees election for single member districts one, two, four, and five for May 6, 2017. Number 13, property tax foreclosure resales. And number 14, tax refunds. Okay. Um, I would like to pull number three for individual consideration. else number five please number five okay anyone else have any of the items that they would like to pull for individual consideration to make a motion that we accept items A1 through A2, A7, and A10 through A14 for approval. Okay. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Laredo, a second from Ms. Coffee to approve action items A1, <coughs> A2, A7, A10, A11, A12, A13, and A14. Any discussion? 
All in favor, please indicate by approval by raising your right hand. That motion passes six in the affirmative, one absent. Um, I'm going to ask that we address item five before three because I was pulling three because of five. In, so let's, I'd like to do action uh, item five first. Because my comments about three are pending only the action we take on five. Okay, the rationale for item five was the school board gives consent for the superintendent to contact the commissioner of education regarding the district's Thank approval you. to begin development of an innovation plan. Approval was granted by the board on December 12th, 2016 to appoint an innovation plan committee with the instructional leadership council. It's my understanding that we have been advised by legal counsel that the letter <coughs> from the superintendent and or board president is required in order to move forward. Is that correct, Dr. Dorsey? That is correct, and we have not notified the commissioner that we were working with our ILC to develop the plan, so we're asking that the superintendent have authority to notify the commissioner where we are in the process. It's not the adoption of the plan, it's just okay. the notification to the superintendent. We're uh, considering to it, and to we'd like for him to be to aware. I'm sorry, yes, the commissioner of education. Any other questions? Mr. Light, are you pulled this? Do you have a comment on this? No, I just don't like the idea of a okay, district sorry. renovation. Of going forward. Right. Okay. All right. So I move that we consent the superintendent to contact the commissioner of education in order to begin the development of an innovation plan. We have a motion to approve action A5. <coughs> I'm confused. Okay. We've get, begun work without notifying the commissioner, and by, by rule, what? the commissioner of education should be notified if we're taking this into consideration to become a district of innovation. It's simply a letter to notify the commissioner. It's so the law report. says the, the school board must notify the commissioner that they have approved for a committee to work on a plan. We have not notified um, the commissioner yet, so either the board could do that or the board could give authority for the superintendent to do that. Now, I asked Mr. O'Brien, I thought when we voted as a board to let the ILT develop a plan and bring it back to us for consideration, I thought that was approval. In my opinion, it was that we approved to move forward with developing the plan and I instructed Mr. O'Brien that meant, in my opinion, that meant we approved for him to send a letter to the commissioner and that I, we had approved developing a plan, that we were going to develop a plan, and he, he and I kind of disagreed and he left it on the... On no, the, I, on I the, concur with you on that. It was legal counsel that okay. identified a requirement for us to notify the commissioner. To notify the commissioner. But my question was, did we have to have another board vote to say it's okay for you to notify the commissioner? No, because what you could have done is, um, as the board president, you could have notified the commissioner once you've approved for us to move forward. But at this point, we have a motion on the floor without a second to call this item. So if we don't second it, then we're not giving consent. Is that correct? That if we don't correct. second it and approve it. But what Dr. Duarte is saying that then, then, Mr. then I, is as board president, can authorize that. that letter to be sent. You would, just, you would have to send it on behalf and just to be clear, this is not us approving. It has nothing to, to do with the plan that's being developed or, or anything. A district of innovation. This oh. is just notifying the commissioner of education that, that we are investigating. That we are. It. That we're looking right. into it. That we are exactly. looking into it. Y'all yeah. are we looking at what it would look like for our district if that's something after y'all do your research and come up with your great ideas Thanks and to the present board. it. <coughs> about what it would look like for us, that's when we would vote. So this is just saying, hey, we've agreed to agree to look into it. Correct. That's, that's, that's all this is. It's just a letter saying our district is looking into developing a plan. I second the motion. Okay. I'm just questioning why are we even looking into it? <laughs> because we voted at a meeting that we would <coughs> continue I know, to I know investigate. that, but I'm saying we're still investigating something that, in my mind, I don't think that this district needs to go in that direction. I understand, Mr. Sanford, I'm just but one we did vote. have a motion. I'm just one vote now. And okay. we, we, did have a, we did have it on an agenda, and it saying. was passed well, by a majority of the board on, that we Mr. could Mr. Richard, but I, I understand what Dr. Duarte is saying, 
but I don't think it. We approved for the district to look into it. We didn't approve for anybody to talk to the commissioner about it. We're not talking to the and, commissioner no, about but, a plan. But what they're saying that if this doesn't go through, you still have the authority to go and speak on behalf of us and say, hey, we're going to look into this. I don't interpret that the same. Well, we already uh, voted to look into it. Well, we voted for our suit, our administration look into it, not to go and notify the Commissioner of Education so, that so we're looking there at. Are, <coughs> there are two notifications that would occur. The first notification is that the board approved um, for a committee to be formed to develop an innovation plan, or you came up with a resolution to approve the process. So we have to notify the commissioner that that has passed through the board. Then the second notification if a plan is adopted, the commissioner would then be notified that we now have a plan and we have to submit that plan to the state. So by law right now, it's either Mr. Richard will go back and say on December 12th or whatever day it was, um, school board approved for a committee to develop or the board can approve uh, the superintendent to do that. But it's just based on that board meeting. Um, we can even put in the letter, it was by a 4-3 vote, um, and I want to make yeah. note that this is during a legal review of our process. We want to make sure that we're doing anything we do going forward right. Uh, we had legal counsel review this matter with us, and it's at that point in time that they said we should get the authority of the board to send the letter in instead of acting of our own. And, and that was TASB said that, uh, TEA told us that, and then um, the, the attorney told us. Once again, it's just a letter for to notify the commissioner of the investigative process. Is our attorney here now? Mr. Peoples? Mr. Peoples. Not the attorney that no, the Mr. Mr. Peoples did not have any input on this decision. Mr. Peoples, it's uh, with your uh, accompanying firm uh, that we partnered with, Thompson & Horton. Uh, David Thompson actually drove out from Houston, and David Hudgens actually drove out. So. You, I'm sorry you were not in that initial contact, but um, but you are a partner with that firm. Would you speak on the behalf of this matter? I wasn't aware that they had that kind of contact. And do you concur that this needs to be an action item that the board does before a letter is written? Well, I think it's supposed to. We have a, um, a motion from Ms. Woods, a second from Ms. Cockrell to approve item A5. Is there any further discussion? All right, all in favor of approving A5, please do so by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. We have a split board 3-3 three, three on this action, therefore the uh, motion fails. On item A6, memorandum. We're not there yet, sir. Okay, she'll be writing We're not there. The We're not there. <coughs> We're back to A3. Now we have a, um, the 2017-18 instructional calendar. Uh, because we failed to be able to notify this, the commissioner, my, I have no discussion about the calendar. But I think what Mr. Peebles just said is you're st you still have you still have the authority to well, notify the commission. That's yeah. what I. Oh, is that I what you? I didn't hear that. I thought you said it was in the best interest that I, we. I don't do it because of your law firm said that the board should approve that action. So it is your understanding that we could still send the letter on my authority as board president. Okay. All right. Well then. Then I will go ahead and raise my what the discussion was going to be about the calendar. Um, if you noticed on the calendar, and uh, refer you to that calendar in our board packet, and that is pretty deep. I'm going to page 40 is where it, the, it starts. The actual calendar is 43. Draft B. The draft that we're voting on tonight, if we vote on it. Okay. Okay. Uh, since the recommendation of the administration is for 
uh, the calendar to be um, A. Okay, I wanted to focus a couple things on that calendar. Um, did notice many of the school districts that have a district of innovation plan in place with are, have, are beginning theirs, some as early as August 14th, others the majority are at August 21st. Um, I would like to, when we talk about proposing the calendar, if the motion comes up and we go with the administration, to have a caveat or an extension on the motion to say under the current circumstances, but to leave an option open to revisit the calendar if the district would become a district of innovation in the near future with the understanding my idea, and this is just my idea looking at it is, I would take the last three days of the school year, which are the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after Memorial Day, put them at the front end of the calendar and have the students start on August the 16th. We just back everything up three days. Staff, to, we would have work days on the 14th, 15th. School would start on the 16th and those staff development days would be pushed back to the week of August the 7th. Just doing that, that would make the first semester 78 days instead of 75. And it would make the second semester 93 instead of 91. That's 75, 94 is a huge discretion, discrepancy between a fall and spring semester. 20 days, three weeks different. <coughs> the students at the high school level earn half unit, half credit on that amount of time. So if we were a district of innovation, my suggestion would be to come back and change the start date for students to be three days earlier, not five or seven like other districts are doing, but three days, just push everything back three and bring just a little bit more competitive balance between the two semesters. That would be the 23rd, not the 16th, right? Right. 23rd, I'm sorry, the 23rd. Mr. Richard, I think that you've made a good point, but I also think that the calendar is developed by a, a group of employees of the district and that if we do indeed become a district of innovation and we want to change the calendar that it, the directive not come from the board but from the employees oh. of the district again as to what they want in well the again if that plan ha would have to have a, a plank that says that as a district of innovation we are going to waive the school mandated start date that would have to be in the plan so the plan. right so and, and then the calendar would go but back I for review but I'm just saying that I, I wanted to be sure we understood that the calendar goes to committees within the district rather than originating with the board as far as what the Under calendar will look yeah. like. And I don't mind sharing the, the administration's point of view on that is simply uh, we, we considered everything you're saying. One of the tenets that may be considered under District of Innovation is that rather than the, as the law reads, you may not start before the fourth Monday of August the new plan may read, you may not so be start before the second Monday in August or something of that nature. So it still leaves us flexibility to, it, it bumps it up two weeks. Like I said, we don't have to start two weeks. We can start one week earlier and three days, whatever we want it to be, but it is developed by the committee. The idea uh, uh, produced by our administration was simply that uh, if we become a district of innovation, it would not occur before June. Um, because it's an annualized thing. It starts on an effective date and it ends on an effective date. So if you started it in March, it would end in March of the fifth year. So primarily you would start it in the summer so that the impact of stopping or starting the District of Innovation plan would ha happen not during the school year. So the idea as discussed is we're, we may be forfeiting some of the privileges of a District of Innovation calendar option for the first calendar year because so many people have to know in advance graduation um, you know, rentals and things of that nature, but but not to say that once we become a district of innovation, the uh, flexibilities are immediate. So if in June or July we opted to switch a few days here and there, that is permissible under the district of innovation plan. But the idea for us to wait until June first to publish a calendar is not favorable for administration or anyone in the district, for that matter, to wait until that time to publish the calendar. So those are the reasons for holding off an immediate action. And I'm not proposing holding off an immediate action. I am proposing that we, and I'm not making the motion, but my hope would be we would support the plan that's come forward as draft A, overwhelming majority of our employees, our teachers have voted for plan A over B, 
And I, I would only ask for the caveat that we approve this based on our current situation and requirements of the state law of Texas. That's correct. Because if, if the ILC comes forward, we approve it. That's a lot of ifs. I understand that. The ILC could come back and say, now that we put that plank in there, we want to look at the calendar again. So we just, just to let you know, we did have that conversation um, when they worked on the, the plan and the committee really felt that leaving the calendar the way it is uh, for that first year was what they would recommend. What they didn't want to do is try and change in the summer and people have vacation set and, and consultants booked and so they felt very comfortable with the calendar and the majority of vote. But we did have that um, conversation when we looked at the timeline. That's all the discussion I have there. Move for approval. Second. A motion from Mr. <coughs> Laredo, second from Ms. Cockle, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to approve item A3 on the consent agenda. Any discussion? Turn with me to page 47. It may be the following page. I'm sorry. Six is the page 47. 47. Okay. Actually, the page I'd like to return to is page 50. Mm -hmm. If I could have you consider striking the modification of the MOU by striking letter I, the paragraph that says letter I from the MOU, and I would submit it from administration as presented, striking letter I, the paragraph. Following the I as a 1.6, is that a different section? You just want paragraph of I? Just the paragraph of I. I move to approve the memorandum of understanding between Goose Creek CIC Police Department and Baytown Police Department, striking letter I. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Coffey, a second from Mr. Laredo to accept item A6 with the amendment to remove section I. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I noticed that the MOU starts to today or whenever it's approved and ends July 31st. Can you tell us why it's just this short amount of time? It's just for the fiscal year that we're in. We'll bring okay. it back as a renewable. Okay. And there was a delay in the process. Mm -hmm. I don't mind right, acknowledging right. that. We've been in transition and it's, uh, we have had some delays in the okay. development of this. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. All in favor of approval uh, of A6 as amended, raise your hand, please. Motion passes six in the affirmative, one absent. Okay, now we, eight and nine, uh, Mr. Sampson, you want to talk about those as one lump sum? Yes, one lump but item? <coughs> okay. Yeah, okay. but my question, I, I kind of filtered through some of it to understand exactly what it was about, so that's no question. It's no question at the time? Yeah. Okay. Seek a motion on items A, 8, and 9. So moved. Second. Motion from Mr. Laredo, a second from Ms. Coffey to approve items 8, 8, and 8, 9 as proposed in the consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Six in the affirmative, one absent. Motion carries. Moving on now to B. Future Board Agenda Items, Trainings and Meetings, B1, Future Board Agenda Items. Does anybody have anyone they would like to see on a future board item? I have um, one for Future Board of Agenda Items, and I, I don't know, I, I talked to Mr. O'Brien about it briefly earlier this, I guess late last week, in regards to SB4, and I don't know when it goes to the House, regards to sanctuary cities but mainly because of how it affects our kids and I know that my um, minors are excluded from this rule which I think um, passes the house it it states that any public college university that has undocumented kids will be cut their funding um, I just want to make sure of the colleges colleges okay. I just want to make sure because our kids not all of them are minors going there some of our kids that take dual enrollment 
I just want to, I would like for us to create a resolution opposing this piece of the legislation. I don't know what the House bill number is. I just know what the Senate bill number is. Um, which brings me to a, to my, my second future board agenda item. And I'd like to know exactly what our, you know, I've kind of been looking at it um, the last few days. What, what, what are, I want to make sure two things. Number one, I'd like to know what our rights in schools are. And, um, and also if our principals and school administration is trained on exactly what happens if, because there was uh, some news last week that one of the charter schools in Austin was one of the stops for an immigration raid where they ended up taking a parent and they waited outside and arrested the parent in front of the kids. And there's also some reports where some kids were followed home and arrested. And, and there's some cases where they've sat at bus stops and pulled up on bus stops and taken kids, 18-year-old um, students. And I want to make sure that, that our, our, our administration, and I would like to know exactly what our rights are as schools because I want to make sure that at no point whatsoever do any parents feel fear for sending them their kids to our school. Okay. Yeah. So you, when you say you, your first question is you, you want to know what the rights we have as a school right. in terms of? As far as being safe havens for children. I don't want anybody to unknowingly allow. So is this the rights of our students? Well, our, our rights in schools. I don't want anybody unknowingly because they don't, because they're told by an officer of ICE to say, hey, you know, we're going to come in. And we do that because we, we're not trained exactly <laughs> what. But there are entities that we're subject to now. Um, right. No, I understand. Federal, federal agencies. Can and that's what I want to know. And I would like our, our administration to be trained on that as well. Yeah. Um, ironically, game wardens and marshals have um, autonomous authority on any campus of ours. So I'll check on DEA, but I'm certain that they have, they have authority. Yeah, ICE. Okay, so here's what I have written down in, uh, for clarification. Uh, the A part, you want to know what the rights that we as a school district have regarding the, the um, legal aspects of of ICE or that department entering our schools. Right. Okay. And the second part, you want to know what training our administrative staff or our entire staff has had on dealing with. I want to make. I don't want to know if. I want to make sure they are trained in in what they know that that the law says. You know, if 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 indeed like okay, game wardens and marshals. Okay, well you can't. Okay. I want to make sure our staff because I don't want anybody saying okay, we're coming in and. And I would just want to make sure that our principals, assistant principals, and whoever else is in charge of that part is trained. <coughs> if they're not trained, that they know they get trained. Okay. So the, the right, the <laughs> rights we have as a school district regarding implementation of ICE or the, their law and enforcement then the interaction the with law enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And the training of our principals, assistant principals, and staff regarding those rights. Right, to make okay. sure they, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just the first part, the resolution. I, I, I have the resolution as the first part, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any Anyone else have a future board agenda item? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'd like to see uh, our uh, director of athletics give us an overview of our athletic program particularly our high school and junior highs and the ability of the coaches that we have uh, at these particular schools because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of people calling me and complaining about certain coaches and there seems to be no way that they can respond to anyone uh, about problems they're having so I like to be able to get a as, it, as they say a um, where where <laughs> are we going as far as athletics in this district and that's from a high school and junior high perspective okay both of them are tied into each other just like education patterns you know where they go and where 
and then also the the uh, staff that's that's we have at the high school in each in all in our sports and how are they uh, dealing with the junior high level? I think I think as part of as part of that he's also asked before which I I'm still curious about as well as as the students leave us and go on to continue athletics on scholarships etc how how effective is our athletic program at producing collegiate level athletes First off before I go to this are you asking for a superintendent's report on this? Um, because I, I don't see where a board action item at well, this point would be as a board action item. Well, I would like to it, it, it would be from the, the uh, athletic director. Oh, no, I, I've got that yeah. part. But I mean, uh, for a board agenda it, it would item, be under, under it would be a discussion, under, under discussion, discussion report. Okay. Yeah. Here's what I have written. Please correct me if I didn't get the gist of it. You would like to have the athletic director give an overview of the high school and junior high programs with regard to the ability of our coaches. Right. That's the first thing you said. Right. Would you please elaborate on the ability of the coaches? What do you mean by that? Meaning the communication factor between them and parents and have we had any uh, problems in that area because I keep hearing about problems that at one high school and I'm trying not to name any. It's okay. Okay. The second thing you said was you also want him to address where we are going regarding athletics. At right. In where we are going. Yeah, where we are now and where we where is he predicting or, or would like to see us going. Okay. From the perspective of where the coaches think they're going. Okay. Then you also said you would like to see how does the staff at the high schools deal with the staff at the junior high. Right. Okay. <coughs> and then Ms. Woods added on to that she would like to see in the report a some type of a longitudinal study on how many of our athletes are moving on to the next level from our high schools. Well, I think that we've discussed that before yeah. that we would like to know how effective is our athletics program in actually turning out college students and and if the athletics program is a is correlated to that are they and going to college to get a higher education and play sports are they getting scholarships because um, to me that's how effective our coaches are obviously we want trophies and we want to win but I think more importantly we want to graduate um, students who are ready for the next level okay now okay I'm gonna just throw in here if the if we're we want a report producing how many of our athletes are receiving athletic scholarships, or do we want how many of our athletics, uh, athletes are going on and playing at another level? Well, not I, that I'm not going to clarify between that. <coughs> I want to know how many of our athletes are, are graduating and going on to um, college, and if athletics had, had a role. If they are on scholarships or if they are playing athletics in college, that that's probably a part of what they learned or were coached okay. in high school. So is that two things? Do you want data on how many of our athletes are graduating and going on to college and how many of our athletes are graduating and going on to participate in college? Because, you know. Sure, that's two things. That's two things. <laughs> and th that's, I can see that as being a dawning report because I don't know if the athletic director has the information of how many of our students are going to college well, because I don't think our counselors could tell you how many of our kids are definitely going to college well, when they graduate. Well, not, not even that. The, the point is, is that how many kids, whether you soccer, baseball, swimming, uh, volleyball, football, whatever, how many of these kids, out of the kids that participate in athletics, when they graduate, how many kids out of that graduating class that played football for you or play baseball or whatever have a scholarship whether it's JUCO whether it's uh, double that, de that definitely is very traceable in my opinion right. easily that's all that's all but to ask how many of our athletes are going to graduate high school and go to college 
I, I'm talking about, you know, this is a, a, a report in retrospect. You know, we, we should have some sort of a record of our students that leave our campuses. We know uh, percentage-wise how many of them wind up going to universities. Well, why can't we say um, how many of them got scholarships? Or is that not something that's well, reported no, to that's our what he at all? He just, and that's what I understood him to say. Right, and how many of our kids about did before, that we would like to have an overview of that type okay. of uh, um, information from our athletics director. Uh, at the time, they weren't tracking any of that information, yet I would think that, uh, you know, our, our athletics department is not simply in place to win trophies or to win sports. It's to develop um, – it's to develop students, it's to help them with their education, it's to further them along. So let's have let's have some way of quantifying, did it work? Did it further them along? Did it get them any better on the road to college than if they had just done academics their whole high school, junior high career? Okay. I will turn that information over to Mr. O'Brien and the staff <laughs> to try to decipher. Okay. Mr. Mulvaney, call me tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> well, but it's basically like we just had national signing day and all of these students who signed scholarships how many students this year in this class coming out have gotten some type of scholarship athletic wise not extracurricular for as band choir and everything like that but just strictly in the athletic department that is I think one, that data, two, that is, data is very easily accessible. Right. Okay. You can pick up the phone and call every one of our sitting head coaches and say, last year, how many of your students signed scholarships to go on to further their education? Yeah. That's very doable. Okay. But when you're going to ask the athletic director, how many of the kids who participate in athletics are going to college? I don't think he has that information or the means to get that. I don't even know if we track that through our counseling department, how many students go on to college, especially mm -hmm. if they go to a college out of state. We have no way of tracking that. We know there is a way, Dr. Duarte, tell me, that we know when our kids enroll at a public, high, uh, public school of further learning, a public one, we have that record. But if they go to Baylor, we have no idea of getting that information. Correct? Private called the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Correct. Board is the one that okay. tracks our students in the state of Texas for us. Okay. But if, if you sign a letter of intent to go to college, that I think is a very, that's, very that's what you doable want thing. Find out okay. how many soccer, swimming, and that is probably yeah. something that could be looked back about two to three years. Yeah, as long as the coach is still there that was there two years ago. Right. But if you ask a first year coach how many kids got from your school got an, a scholarship in this sport two years ago, that first year coach probably couldn't tell you. But if he was on the staff, he probably could. Correct. Okay. All right. I think I've got it down for them to work on that. Okay. And if the presentation comes back and it's not what you wanted, we can always send it back for more information. Okay. Got Anything it, absolutely. else? I would think that that information is in the college and career office as well because they track every single scholarship that every student gets. So not just the athletic director would have that information. If it's reported. If it's reported. If it's reported. Because we have students that will graduate and come July sign some kind of an intent to go to a NAI school. And I don't expect that the athletic director would have that information okay. either. Okay. But possible. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Moving on to board trainings. Uh, I know this weekend three of the members of the board will be going with Mr. O'Brien to Innovators con Conference in San Antonio, and then we have upcoming, how many of us are going to um, Nationals? Four. We'll be going with to NASB. Okay. All right. Any other board trainings that you would like to see us have in the near future? Okay. Okay. Future board meetings. Anyone have any suggestions on adding meetings, changing meetings, you dropping meetings? You sent an email uh, about a meeting. Uh, is there anything definitive on that? Um, I don't think it's on there. Okay. 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 Ok
this time we will now adjourn into closed meeting um, we will now recess into closed session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act government code section 50 551.071 551.072 551.073 551.074 551.075 551.076 551.082 551.083 551.084 551.085 551.086 551.087 551.088 551.089 551.090 551.091 no action will be taken while the board is in closed meeting and you called the time at 8.05 closed meeting uh, would like to say that no action was taken while the board was in closed session uh, we will now commence with uh, we have reconvened into open session e consideration of personnel mr o'brien administration would recommend that the board approve elections and accept resignations as presented move for approval second we have a, a motion from mr laredo a second from Ms. coffee to approve elections and resignations as presented by administration any discussion all in favor <coughs> please raise your right hand or either hand will do just one hand thank you we have six hands in the affirmative, one absent. We have one administrative recommendation. That's for a math instructional specialist. That would be Ms. Nancy Bonds. Move for approval. I'll second that motion. We have a motion from Ms. Coffey, a second from Ms. Woods to approve the appointment of Nancy Bonds as math instructional specialist. Any discussion? All in favor, indicate by raising your hand. Motion carries 6 4, one absent. Agenda item F, consideration of possible action regarding waiver of eligibility for certain provisions of policy DEC local or other employee benefits. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Laredo and a second from Ms. Cockle to approve uh, the waiver of eligibility for certain provisions of the policy DEC local or other employee benefits. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise hand. Motion carries six four one absent. Now at item number eight, I would seek a motion for adjournment. I move. Is that Mr. W Ms. Woods? Oh, what if there's no second? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting for it. I have a motion for Ms. Woods, a second from the top. We uh, adjourn at 9.01 p.m. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please indicate. Raise your hand. We are adjourned. Thank you.